Hello again. So now I'm making the third video in my little video series for you. And last time we looked at obviously how you can reduce a negative feeling that you're having physical sensations when you're thinking about the thought. And I just wanted to add on to that learning just to say that you can also use this the opposite way for a positive. You can think of a feeling that feels quite good and change the different parts and components to make it feel even more fantastic. So I just wanted to point that out to you and you'll do that in exactly the same way, altering each component one at a time and when you're making those positive changes, make sure you save them. Okay, so what I'm going to go on to now is what to do if you see images in your mind that cause you problems. And we're gonna work very much in the same way as I did on the last recording. We're gonna look at the different parts that that visual image is made up of. So once again, you bring that thing that's bothering you to mind and you would think, okay, on that scale of naught to 10, 10 being the strongest, how strong is that feeling that it makes me feel? Or once again, you can use the smiley faces. Well, they're not all smiley, but the different faces with different emotions. You scale what that emotion currently feels like, and then you work through it step by step. So what you do if you're working with the image is you think about how that image is constructed, how it's made. So the first thing you would do is perhaps think, is that image in colour or is it in black and white? And once again, make a little note, jot it down. You then might think, is that image moving like a film? or still like a photograph. Now this next one is a very important one. We call it associated or dissociated. And what that basically means in everyday language is, am I seeing that image out of my own eyes as if I'm actually there? Or can I see myself like my head, my body, my arms and legs within that image in my mind? it often impacts how strong that emotion feels for a person. You then might look at the size of the image. What sort of size is it? So you might say, oh, it's A3, or it's a metre by a metre. It's three foot by three foot. It fills the whole room. You imagine looking at that image and you identify what size it is. You then want to notice how close or far away the image is that you're viewing. So quite often, but not always, when somebody's got a traumatic memory, it's quite often right here, right in front of them. So they're constantly walking into it in their day-to-day -day life. And we need to shift that. The other things you might look at are the location in terms of, is it straight in front? Is it slightly above or below? Or is it slightly off in one direction or another? There may also be other elements like, is it portrait or landscape? Does it have a frame or a border around it? Or no border? So you take some time and you think of all the different elements and components as to how it's made up. And then once again, you change them one at a time. So for example, if it was a black and white image, you might turn it into colour or vice versa. If you were looking out of your own eyes, you would step out of your body and imagine seeing yourself in that image or vice versa. You might start shrinking it down to make it smaller and smaller, perhaps till it becomes the size of a postage stamp. You might push it 
further off into the distance so it gets so far away you can no longer see it. You may even want to take it and throw it over you so it's behind you in the past. You may change it from being, say, straight in front of you to being to the side or somewhere else. You may take it from being a moving film to still like a photograph. Or you might take it the other way so that you can see the progress and change as you move through that time period. It doesn't matter how your mind creates it, your mind is unique to you. It's simply about identifying how it's made and then experimenting. Changing each bit at a time till you get it to how you want it to be. Like I've said, make sure you save it each time. Give yourself something to think about in between each positive change. And if you make a change that you don't like, just put it back to how it was. You may like to use this just on its own with an image, or you may like to use it in combination with changing the feeling, as I showed you in the last video. It's like I said, some people's minds store it in just pictures, just sounds or just feelings, whereas other people might store it in a combination of them all. So you might need to make some changes on the feeling, some changes visually, some changes with the auditory, which I'm going to go on to during my next video. Remember as well, like I said at the beginning, you can also use this to heighten positive emotions. So if you've got a memory that makes you feel quite happy, you could alter that picture to make it bigger, brighter and stronger so that it's even more positive and even more empowering. I hope you find that useful and helpful. When I found this strategy myself, I found it revolutionary. It took me a little while to get the hang of it. It took practice and I needed my pen and paper with me to help jot the information down. But after I did it a couple of times, it started to become quicker and easier. And the more I did it, the easier it became and the easier it became, the quicker it got. So now my mind just does this automatically. It gets it. It takes away any trauma or stress from things that are no longer serving me and it amplifies the good. So I'd invite you to give this a go and see how you get on. Speak to you soon. Bye bye.